the foundation of AI governance should be data governance. Being able to understand what is the data that's going into your AI is very, very important. If it contains uh, bad quality information, if it contains sensitive private information about your customers, about your employees, AI will get to know about it and will uh, will spew that out, uh, either uh, hallucinating uh, on some question or when asked directly about it. So it's very, very important that that foundation of data governance is built. Now, beyond that data governance foundation, uh, AI has special uh, requirements, things uh, like model discovery, uh, allowing end users to figure out what are the right models uh, to, to use within uh, the enterprise uh, and, and which of them are the right ones to use for my use case. Because believe it or not, everybody, uh, and like you said at the beginning, every executive is behind uh, you know folks in R&D uh, to create new generative AI applications. Um, once these applications are out there, the first question uh, that your end customers will ask is what uh, model uh, what models were used what were uh, the what are the ai governance practices at this organization and that kind of trust and transparency is built through thinking about these ai governance frameworks right at the beginning so model discovery finding what's the right model uh, being able to consume the right models and document them saying that these are these are the models that i'm using these are the use cases for which we are using them will go a long way uh, once this application, generative AI application becomes uh, production, yeah, goes in production. Jitender, does that all ring true with you? Anything you'd want to add to that or other components? It does, Tom. Um, thank you, Gaurav. I was I was wondering what's the best way to answer that question. So I said, okay, why is why is the why is the governance framework critical? Why is it important? It's such a timely topic, as you mentioned earlier. So there are, there are five things that come to my head. Is that any AI solution that we build? The first and foremost, can can that solution be very transparent? Can it talk about how it operates? Can it talk about uh, how it makes decisions? Can it talks about the sources of data it has been trained on? So tr with transparency, we build a trust. And of course, if you have a trust in the system, you can imagine you can start to imagine how you can put a you can put a government's frame governance framework around it. The the four other things that came to my head when I was thinking about AI governance framework was around ethical use, and we have all uh, have have seen in in the last ten years how machine learning systems and following machine learning systems, deep learning systems, we have seen systematic biases being introduced in those systems. So that's another uh, critical element when we think about AI governance. The next speed is accountability. If a if an AI system makes mistakes, who's held accountable? The, the lower layer in the in the uh, AI system, that's the large language models, or the application provider, or the solution provider, or the data provider. So some clear boundaries around who is accountable for um, system making bad decisions. And then of course, compliance. I mean, we have seen very little in compliance just yet. There's a lot of uh, chatter around this, but I think at some point you have to understand that these systems need to comply with local rules and regulation. And um, data governance is a, is a very old, uh, time-tested topic. It also plays a very critical role in AI governance. And the last topic in, in our head is risk management. If there is um, some major risk associated with this system, who is again responsible? How will we manage the risk? Uh, can we ask questions around, around uh, risk management in our AI systems? So those are the five uh, main dimensions when I was thinking about AI governance framework, I have to think about transparency, um, ethical use, accountability, compliance, and risk management. Well, I think you perfectly teed up the questions to, to be coming. Um, Matt, are there any other things you'd like to add? I, I think, you know, J Jatender hit it on the head. When, and to me, it's really a couple, two things. One is what we're seeing from our customers and clients is it's the wild, wild west in AI, right? And, and no one knows what models are being used, where we're using AI, whether it's in our products or whether it's to drive efficiencies within the organizations, or it's locked down, right? And, and both of those are bad, right? We have to have, everyone knows that AI is the future. Every company will be an AI company in the future. So we have to be able to adopt this, but we have to be able to adopt it in a safe, meaningful way. And from my perspective, it starts with 
understanding where AI is within an organization. That's really kind of, we can talk about the data and the data that goes in the models, but first and foremost, from where I sit as CEO is, who is using AI in the organization? And how do we track that? And how do we understand that? And how what are the approval metrics by that? And then to Jatender's point, how do we do that in a way that's governed? And I think that is coming sooner than later. The EU has already introduced the EU AI Act. Uh, NIST has the NIST AI um, RMF framework that's out there. So being able to link your AI governance strategy of where it is to then the, the control set that we are following for AI, to then the policies that we have in our organization, to then the risks that AI poses, right? What type of risks are we are we going to take on uh, with this specifically cyber, and then really what we haven't talked about at all is AI with third party use. Every company right now is really an outsourcer of information to other third parties that they use. How are those third parties using AI? And we could have the best AI controls, the best AI governance, the best AI policies within our own internal organization, but if we're shipping our data over to or customers' data over to the third party vendors that we use to just drive efficiencies in our business, how are they doing? What are they doing with that, right? And just asking simple questions. SIG already has this built into their into the SIG-like framework of just generative AI questions that you have to ask about your third party. So it's capturing all that information too, to me, to help make strategic-based decisions so we can move fast with AI, but we can also protect ourselves. Roy, anything to add to that? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take this in a somewhat different direction. I agree with all the things that have been said. Uh, but, um, you know, I come from a company that does a lot of engineering. And one of the things you really focus on in engineering is making sure you actually start it by defining the problem you're solving. And once you have actually define that problem, which I find often is not done well, then you actually know what kind of data you're going to need for this. You understand who's going to be affected by this system. Is it your customers? Is it your employees? Is it the general public? You're able to start talking about things like risk matrices, you know, how autonomous is this system and what level of effect can it have on people? Uh, different levels of that mean for mean that you need to put a lot more kinds of care into that. Um, you know, you need to look at both what the expected usage of your system is, but it's also really important to look at unintended uses. You know, William Gibson, the science fiction writer, had a wonderful quote, the street finds its own uses for technology. You know, we, we invent these systems, we expect them to be used in a certain way, and then we find out that people are using them in different ways. And one of the things that can help you with that is make sure there's a diverse set of people who are involved in all parts of what you're doing. So they can look at something that you've gotten perhaps a little tunnel vision on and say, well, wait a minute, what if this happens? Well, you know, what if it happens like this? Um, I've often partnered with the legal and the regulatory people um, and the quality people. They can be enormously helpful in helping you understand what the risks are and things you're doing or what kind of facets you need to look at that you may not see. So I'd, I'd suggest that that's one of the things, you know, I'm going to keep talking about core issues. I think it's very important, especially in a fast-moving area like this, that we really focus on some of those kinds of fundamentals. Stephen, anything that we're missing here? We, we talked about a lot of things. Anything sure. to, to wrap up this question? <laughs> so I'll just, I'll build, I'll keep it brief and build on what Roy was talking about with the diverse perspective. I found companies that, that I work with that are the most successful in, in implementations of actually getting AI models into production, which is a huge challenge, are those that actually implement cross-functional teams across security, privacy, the data teams, the technology teams, and the business themselves that are defining the business problems to make sure that the AI is actually executing what, what it was defined for, to, to Roy's point exactly, right? I also find that transparency and education has to be a part of that framework. So I think data literacy is, is becoming a top topic uh, within this industry and something that we have to make sure is, is part of that governance framework. 